yes, it's here. Okay, fantastic. Um, good evening, everyone, uh, to our orientation for tonight. Uh, here we have our uh, Dr. Ramir Sufsar within us and me, and uh, inshallah, and both of us will try. Yes. Uh, please, everyone, mute yourself. Okay. So both of us will try to make you understand the overall structure of the MRCS Part B OSCE exam. And we will talk about something like the overall exam structure, how you are going to prepare yourself, what are the stations, how many stations are there, how much time do you need, and what are the costs, how many time do you need for your whole preparation, and also uh, about some courses, about the mocks, and about the simulation mocks as well, and we will have the questions and answer sessions as well. Okay, so before we start, uh, you need to know about some uh, important things. So uh, in your exam day, in your exam day, you will be asked to go and attend to your exam center just one or two hours prior to your exam starts. Why? Because they will try to um, make some subscription, some uh, arrangement for you. They will brief you and uh, they, they need to check your identity as well, okay? And uh, after your briefing session, they will offer you some uh, light breakfast. I will suggest please eat a lot of uh, things as much as you can because you will be, uh, you will have some problem like you can be hypoglycemic. There will be some snacks as well. Okay, in the break, uh, that means um, in between your exam, uh, like uh, for the knowledge or a skill, there could be a break or after eight stations or nine stations, there could be a break. Then you can have some snacks as well, okay? Try to eat a lot as much as you can. In, in the exam, during your exam stations, there will be a lot of water bottles whenever you need in the exam base, in the station base. So you need to keep yourself rehydrated. Don't worry about the bathroom and all those stuffs because you can go whenever you want during your rest period, okay? So we will be talking about the rest stations and the normal stations in a bit. Then you will understand more what I'm talking about, okay? <clears throat> keep in your mind, you're not allowed to take anything during your exam except your stethoscope. The things like your phone, your money bag, anything like paper, pen, your um, passport, nothing. You, you will just go by yourself and only with your um, stethoscope if you want. Though, if you don't have any stethoscope, okay, no problem. You can just go there. Everything will be provided into your station. Whatever you need, everything will be there, okay? So don't worry about that. About the stations, uh, as for the new guidelines, we have 17 stations to face, okay? These 17 stations as a whole, uh, there will be total number of stations is 17, but it is divided into two parts, okay? The knowledge and the skill part. In the knowledge, we have some other things and the skill part, we, will, we are having some subdivisions as well. So um, total, we are going to face about 17 stations. All right, so here, the 17 stations in, if you are going to give your exam in UK, okay, mostly all of those stations will be face-to-face, -face, okay? But in case you are going to give your exam in Kuala Lumpur or in um, Delhi or in Cairo, in some other places, mostly there will be a hybrid system. What does it mean by the hybrid system? The hybrid system is like, you are um, specifically in, in case of the knowledge part, you are sitting in front of a, um, a screen and in the screen, uh, you can see uh, the examiner. They're, they're, they will be sitting over there and they're looking at you via the screen, okay? And um, you need to, they will ask you the questions and you are going to answer them. So that's the hybrid thing. And most of you, uh, a lot of uh, candidates ask me uh, that that will be a hybrid. So it will be a little bit difficult. No, 
uh, it's the same thing. Okay, there will be a big screen and you can just talk and they can uh, just take question you and you can answer them. So it's, it's completely fine. But for the skill part, it's not hybrid. It's same all over the world, okay? It's the same thing. Okay, <clears throat> about the timing, the overall station is uh, 10 minutes. These 10 minutes is divided into one and nine. So one minute is to read the stem, okay? So suppose you are going to a station, station one, okay? Suppose before you enter your station um, over the door, there will be some stem, okay? You need to read that stem within one minute. Then after the one minute, you will enter into the real station and then you will have nine minutes in your hand. So each station is 10 minutes and it is divided into one and nine minutes. Okay, what are the rest station? Suppose you had station one, station two, station three, and there is a rest station and the rest station is also 10 minutes. Keep that in your mind, okay? So it varies center to center that how many rest stations you are going to have, um, mostly in UK centers, you will be having two or three rest stations. Somewhere you can have um, rest stations after each normal station as well. Okay. Uh, we will talk about the communication said, station. Mm -hmm. Please. Hello. Yes, please. Yes, I, as far as I know, the rest station just before the any procedure, is it right or wrong? Or is no, 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 it, it varies, it varies center to center. Okay. Oh, yeah. It varies center to center, yeah. as I said. You can have your rest station um, after each normal station, or you can have a rest station after five stations or six stations. Okay. But there is an exception in the communication station, okay? Which I will talk about uh, in a bit, okay? Is there... I, uh, Dr. Shakot, I, I, I cannot hear you, please. All right. Open so, your mic, he, he muted himself. Yeah, you are muted, Dr. Shakot. Oh, sorry. Is mm -hmm. there any procedure? Is there any rest station or any other station to prepare myself just before the procedure station? Just hand gloving or any catheterization? No, 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 like... no, 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 nothing. Uh, there will be nothing just like a station to prepare myself mentally or physically. Yeah, uh, um, can I just uh, yes, sir, please. Uh, can I just clarify something about rest station? Yes. From my yes, experience yes, from, Ka yes. from Cairo Center. From Cairo Center. Okay. Um, uh, according to rest station, uh, I took as an example in, in, in Cairo, in Cairo Center. Okay. Uh, in Cairo Center, when you asked to join the exam, we have been in two groups. Group who will start the knowledge. Okay, and another group starting the skills part. Okay, whatever you take, my son, I examined here is 10, and here is 10, they make it half and half, and we start, or whatever, uh, uh, make here 12, and here 10, uh, 8, and something like this. When when we go to the knowledge section, um, the stations was like this. Uh, rooms, we have rooms beside each other, okay? Um, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, okay? Everyone has a number, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, say twelve. What? What we have actually that uh, station number five, this is a rest station, 
Station number nine is a rest station. Everyone from these 10 will go to start. Okay, so 10 candidates will go directly for here, 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 and so on till 10. So what was the rest station that you go from here and there's a rest station 10 minutes in between, but you can start your exam with a rest station. And that happened with me. My first station was a rest station. And all my friends went to clinical, 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 then rest station. And what we happen that we go in a circuit. So this one move here, 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 and this one move here, and so on. So the rest station, you don't know between which part, not after one or two or five station. He will not give you a break after five station. So all the examiners will be busy at the same time. When number 12, oh, everyone will know, you will find here an uh, examiner uh, like supervisor. So will just say, move after you hear the bell and then you leave the station, you go out, you stand in front of the next station. Okay, and you have your then another uh, 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 ring you will listen. So you face to read the stem of the station for one minute, then you go inside the room and so on. And this one finish after 12, start here. So you can start your station like six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five. Then this circle finished. You have a break. We took a break about half an hour, 30 minutes. Then we make exchange between the two teams. This is exactly what's happening in the exam. So you don't know where is your rest station. For me, I started with the rest station and then have a, a, a session uh, uh, and then have another rest station. By the way, my rest station was before uh, a procedure a procedure uh, uh, a station session uh, because I think they have time to prepare. So I don't know, I have this and then I went for a urinary caster. Then I have another station. Then I went for suturing. Then I went for another one and so on. And then I continue the circuit till I finish at four. Okay, good the idea about the rest station then. You have a break between skills and knowledge. And then we started the knowledge the same. Uh, I can't remember I have a rest station between knowledge or not. Maybe I had one, okay, because before them, but I just went through. And then when you have a rest station, you have to wait 10 minutes more and then go to the other station. That's maybe a, a simple way what happened uh, through one of the centers about stations. Okay, thank you. Yes, so the thing is um, in uh, Cairo, in um, Kuala Lumpur, in Delhi, it could be like something what uh, Sar just explained. You can have your knowledge and you can have your skill parts separated, but in case of UK centers, it can be mixed. So yeah, like um, maybe you are doing uh, anatomy station, and then in the next, you are doing a procedural one as well. So it can be mixed in the UK centers as well. So you, 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 guys, you guys need to keep those things in your mind when you are going to give, uh, give your exam in UK as well. Okay, so there is an exception in the communication station because in the communication, we have two separate things. Okay, so we will try to explain those while I will um, give you the idea about the communication station later on. Okay, <clears throat> about the knowledge, you have three things to understand. One is um, you'll have um, three stations about anatomy. You will have three stations about the applied surgical science and the critical care. And you will have two stations about the pathology. And those are the uh, total eight stations in the knowledge part. In the skill part, you'll have nine stations in among those nine stations 
three of them are the physical examination, two is for history taking, two for procedural skills, and two for the communication station. Okay. Uh, till now, is it clear for everyone? Then I will move for the next segment. Is it clear? Please reply, everyone. If anyone has any question, you can ask. Yes, Dr. Hasib. Is it clear? Okay, fine. Uh, anyone else? Okay, okay, okay. All right. So let's uh, break it down. Let's talk about the anatomy, okay? So now we will be talking about the knowledge. In the knowledge, we have, at first, we have anatomy to talk about. In the anatomy, uh, what are the things you can have? So mostly in your uh, station of anatomy, they will show you some uh, pictures, suppose like this, okay? And uh, they will ask you a few questions regarding the pictures. Uh, suppose uh, here they can ask you, can you identify number 16? Can you identify number 25? Okay, uh, in this picture, can you identify what is number 29? What is number 30, 31, 30, 27, like blah, blah, blah. Okay, after you answer, they will cross question you regarding those identifying points. Okay, maybe you said, okay, this is median nerve, this is uh, ulnar nerve, okay? And then they can ask you, okay, what will happen if there is an injury uh, in the median nerve at the wrist, okay? Or, or what will be the problem for the patient if there is an injury in the ulnar nerve, okay? Then yeah, you will yeah, answer hey, those. It's time, yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> So mostly in the anatomy, you will start with identifying some points and then they will cross question you about those uh, identifying points. Next, they can ask you uh, about some relations about the blood supply, venous drainage, like uh, the nerve supply. Also, they can ask you about the surface marking, okay? Um, they can ask you to demonstrate some movements over yourself or they can ask you to demonstrate some uh, surface marking onto a living subject, okay? Or they can ask you simply, okay, can how can you um, um, tell me where is the brachial plexus, where you are going to feel that, okay? Or where is the coracoid process? So something like that in anatomy, uh, they will ask you about few questions. So if you want to add about that um, in anatomy part, Yes, in anatomy, um, uh, you can face uh, maybe three or four uh, main things during the station. First thing, and this is the most common, you can find a picture um, like uh, like this picture shared by Dr. Adi uh, and specimen inside the picture, and he asks you what is the um, what is uh, market here? What is number sixteen? What is this uh, with the arrow and sums? and something like this. This is the most common. Second thing, sometimes you find uh, a specimen and mostly now it is a bone. I think in, before in UK and some centers was like uh, a, like something like cadaver or, or liver specimen or kidney specimen or something like this. But I think nowadays it is not available. Just you can find picture or a specimen of bone. Uh, you find a clavicle, you find a uh, a uh, humerus, you find uh, ulnar radius, and then he asks you, what is this impression? Where is, uh, can you please put this clavicle in the anatomical position? Where is the medial end? Where is the lateral end? Where is the superior? Where is the inferior surface? And then he just goes through the station from this specimen. Uh, yani for some, as example, he put for me uh, three uh, cervical vertebra, and he told me what you expect. It was atlas, it was uh, 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 it was the seventh uh, cervical vertebra, and he just asked me from this, what is this impression? What is this impression? Can you articulate for me uh, atlas and axis? I can remember. Can you articulate these two, please, for for me? Uh, uh, what, why you say this is atlas? Why you say this is the 
Gaza uh, and why this is the seventh. This was the entrance of the questions and Jen, Jen asked me about the ligaments and everything about. Uh, the third thing I have, one of the stations, I have a complete skeleton. And he just explained for me how is the, what is the precarious plexus coming from on this skeleton. Just was a plastic skeleton. Uh, and he just showed for me what is C, uh, C5, C6, C7, uh, C8, and T1 coming from where. Sh show me the hole between the two vertebra it will arise from, and then show me how it goes through the hand. And then he asked, started to ask me about reflexes and something like this. Uh, one more, he asked me, like, show me on your body, uh, where is the C7 vertebra, how you can feel it? Okay, uh, show me in your body how or how in your hand you can make for me uh, this test. Or show me abduction with your hand, uh, with your thumb. Show me uh, abduction, show me opponents, show me what movement with your hand. Um, another just one question in one station, there was, um, I think, someone in the station sitting beside the examiner, and he asked me, show me how with this hammer you can do the break you uh, 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 triceps reflex, or you can do the uh, supinatal reflex. Okay, so in the anatomy station, I'm talking about what happened in Cairo Center, and this is very common to happen. You can have different ways of introducing the anatomy station. You can you can have a picture, you can have a specimen of bone, you can have full skeleton, you can have uh, you can ask something on your uh, on your body to show him or to to uh, uh, to show me the anatomical snap books, or he can ask you for any assistant or any someone uh, volunteer inside the uh, station to to do something like. Uh, uh, any reflex and he asked you what is the nerve for this reflex and what is the muscle for the reflex. Oh, one last thing I forget, he can just give you an x-ray and ask you about something anatomical mark in this x-ray. Okay, uh, like uh, like an odontoid, an occlusive uh, open mouth uh, a view for the for the cervical vertebra. That's all uh, regarding yes, the and also, varieties also they can of serve... the anatomy question. And yes, also they can Sorry. give you, sir, they can also give, sir, um, the MRI, suppose in, in case of the shoulder. And that's very important. And that's yes, very, yes, um, yes, yes. The MRI. Exactly. A radiology, you can have a, yes. a radiology about something and you can see MRIs maybe and also for the uh, uh, lumbar disc prolapse and ask you where is the, the prolapse in, in between which vertebra as well. So uh, there is some varieties for the anatomy station. You have to be well trained about all of these varieties <clears throat> during your preparation. Thank you. Yes. These anatomy stations are very easy and also very volatile. The problem is um, when you are going to do your study about the anatomy, it's easy to understand. But after a few days, within 10 or 12 days, you are, you are like, you will be losing you will be losing a few points, okay? So try to uh, read the anatomy um, as much as you can and try to do a full revision just before your exam, okay? Anyone has any question regarding anatomy? I, I guess not. Um, if you have, you can ask, uh, no problem, okay. For the next one is the critical care here. Um, your station will be starting with a stem and your station will be uh, will will depend on the stem itself suppose you are going to enter into a critical um, care station sometimes it's very difficult to differentiate between the critical care and the pathology station but um, something like that uh, this one uh, you are having us simple stem, okay? Then after reading the stem, you will enter into the station. Uh, sometimes they will show you some, uh, some, some X-ray, MRI, and they can show you ABG, uh, ECG, okay? And um, then they will ask you, suppose uh, here is an uh, X-ray as well. They can show you the X-ray and they can ask you, okay, what are the things you are seeing here? 
what is the cause of this patient about the uh, patient is having right now, then they can ask you further questions regarding this. About the critical care, uh, what you need to know exactly. So about the critical care, there are two different variety of stations. One is uh, under the variety of ATLS protocol and another variety is under the CRIS protocol. And there are few general topics, but mostly in the exam, you will have one station about the ATLS. Maybe uh, the patient is having uh, cervical spine fracture or lumbar spine fracture or a generalized uh, normal trauma patient, okay? So uh, you will be having one from ATLS. Next, uh, from a CRISP, uh, you can have one uh, station as well from the CRISP. And there are some general topics you can have, but you need to have a very good idea about the ECG, ABG, X-rays, the CT scan and the MRI. Okay, but those are very specific. You don't need to go and do a PhD over AVG. You, do, you don't need to go and do a, a like a, a PhD for a radiology. No, no, no. Those are very specific and you have to know the specific things for the MRCS, okay? So there are a few things about those and these are really easy uh, in the critical care and you will have overall three stations about the critical care itself. In the critical care, the most important things to know is two protocols in the very first place. Those are the ATLS and the CRISP, okay? Other than that, every other things already all of you knows like um, about the TPN, about the um, uh, CV line, about the intubation, about the uh, indications of um, uh, admission of the ITU into the ITU, for, for what are the criteria of those? Few things are common, okay? Few things are common, but mostly it depends on the protocols itself. Um, sir, if you want to add anything in the critical care? No, 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 I think everything is clear. If anyone okay, wants anyone to ask has any question, yes, any, anyone has any question, please you can ask, please. If not, uh, we can proceed further, please. Okay, I think uh, everyone is clear. Okay, next is pathology. This is something uh, you cannot deal with. Okay, this is very very uh, tough in your exam, why? Because in every, uh, not every, but uh, most of the uh, exam, uh, you will have few new questions or uh, something new stations it's as well, okay? Recently, they have uh, updated uh, new stations along with osteomyelitis. Uh, there are few things about the actinomycosis, and also they have um, asked a lot of questions in the FAP stations as well. So in every exam, they're trying to um, like um, impose and create new questions in patho. In pathology, again, the same way you are going to start. At first, you are going to read a stem by yourself before you start, um, then, after you read the stem within one minute, you are going to enter into the station and then they will ask you a few questions. Here also uh, in the patho, there are two main categories to divide. One under the uh, cancer. Cancer, uh, you can have one station regarding the cancer stations like um, suppose you are having esophageal carcinoma or something like that. And one station as a general one, okay? Uh, something like osteomyelitis, something like abscess. So you can have one from the general topic and another from the uh, cancer station. Here, the problem is because it's only two stations, they can ask you 
anything okay they try to ask you a lot of questions in the pathology stations and um, it, it doesn't like really matter in which station you are uh, right now they can ask you uh, any questions in any station okay because of this um, uh, short amount of stations in pathology what you need to know you, you you need to have a very good idea about the overall pathology okay and some few special diseases like um, as i said um, about this infective endocarditis about the peptic ulcer disease about the um, cancers uh, station about the fab about the uh, gastric cancers something like that so there are in general pathology, you, you need to have a very clear idea and about some cancer stations as well, okay? All right. Um, in pathology, also, uh, what is important is a pathology report. You will see uh, when you are going to study, uh, there are few pathology reports uh, and you need to uh, describe those pathology reports to the examiner in the form like they will ask okay this is the pathology report and you need to explain uh, this pathology report to the patient's family in four simple words or five simple words or um, something like that so you need to describe the whole pathology report to the examiner and also uh, there are a lot of things like um, histopath um, something like biopsy uh, how how can you do the staging? How can you do the grading? There are a few general questions like the virtuous triad. They really like that. So something like that, they will ask you in every <coughs> station itself, okay? So the pathology is the toughest in the overall uh, preparation for your MRCS. And you really don't know what could be the questions uh, in your uh, station. Uh, yesterday, they just put a new question. So what is biofilm? Okay. So there are a lot of questions. They are just adding, adding, adding in each um, exam day. Okay. So that's why this patho, uh, it's really uh, difficult, a little bit difficult to go for. And it's also a very boring subject to read and study. So yeah, that's why it's like very um, tough stations in among all of the stations of the MRCS uh, OSCE. Okay, so if you want to add anything uh, in patho. Uh, yes, uh, just just to clear one thing, uh, uh, you cleared that between, you said, yeah, I think now we finished the knowledge uh, section, yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, now, now Dr. Atik talk about anatomy, anatomy, station three, uh, uh, critical care three, two, sorry, and pathology two. Critical uh, care three, pathology from, two, sorry. Sorry, there are three and two. Okay. Dr. Atit asked you, this anatomy station is the most important station you have. Okay. And it is the easiest station. And you can imagine that there is no new question you you will face for the first time in your life because you studied anatomy many times during your study and we almost covered anatomy in part a and it will the rest will be covered in part b and those three stations you have to uh, uh, get as many marks as you can as many marks as you can so if there's a station from 20 you have to get at least 16 17 I don't. I, I want to say some can get 20 out of 20 in this station, because you have a great risk in these two stations to face new questions, difficult question, or uh, uncooperative examiner, uncooperative examiner. Uh, uh, pathology station and critical care station can mix. You can find some question. It within the critical care itself and within the pathology itself. That means that if I have this station about uh, valve lesion, okay, and then he can tell you this patient is taking steroids, okay, and then he asks you what is the most common side effect of osteoporosis, okay, define osteoporosis. What is the difference between osteoporosis and osteomalacia? Okay, so 
when you go for a station for pathology and you find the name of the station is, is new, you didn't face before, just don't panic and go through the questions. And mostly you will find questions that already mix it from other stations. So when you go for the, uh, uh, now we study together this station about the mitral valve lesion or something like this or infective endocarditis. You will not go to the exam, find a copy paste of this picture with the same question. No, you'll find question, five question from this station, two question from another station of osteoporosis and one station from osteomyelitis and so on. Okay, so don't panic. And plus you will find new questions. And this is the risk stations that many when he lost uh, or fail the knowledge part because of this station. But how I can make sure, or I, I try to, to pass this part of the exam, I have to concentrate on this. I have to concentrate on this. Okay, so if I have one, one and a half station from here and one station from here, I almost will pass. Even if I miss one complete station, I almost will pass if I pass one here and one here, and I'm giving two near full marks in one or two here and one here, and uh, mostly three from here, I can pass. So just be smart in your study. Uh, 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 about how I want to, something easy between my hands and all the questions I have between my hands. So I have to stress and anatomy to finish. You know, the same for part A, what I found that some who unfortunately can't pass for A, I found that they they have for paper one anatomy from 75, and I found they got 45. And they got 200, and the pass mark is 205. I was very, very, very unhappy because you lost 30 questions from anatomy here. Okay, and it is already can make you pass with a good mark because no. Anatomy question are not new. He will not, he will not put a new bone in your body or a new organ or a new relation in your body. Anatomy is fixed concepts. Okay, pathology is the same, like fixed, fixed knowledge, but he can put for you, like Dr. Atik said, another new uh, term. You don't know another new classification. You don't know another new grade. You don't know and tell me the grading of this or something, or what is named this, or what is the histopathology of this disease? Something may be new and you can't cover, but the only thing you can cover during your preparation, anatomy. If you make sure you will pass anatomy stations by 90, 95%, just loss about two, three marks in every station, make sure that you will pass all the knowledge part. Okay, so be smart, don't ignore anatomy. Anatomy is very important to pass then. Go as much as you can in, uh, uh, in other station pathology and critical care. Okay, thank you. All right, so <clears throat> here is the knowledge part we finished. Next, we'll talk about the skill part. In the skill, we have uh, communication. So you need to come, you, you are having two stations in the communication. One is communication with the patient or patient's relative. And you have another station, a communication phone call. Okay, let's talk about the first one. So in communication uh, station, uh, you have uh, one, preparatory station, okay? One preparatory station, what does it mean by the preparatory station is, there is a complete 10 minutes, okay? Again, this will be divided into two, one minute to read your stem, okay? And nine minutes to go through the case files, okay? The case files of the patient. There, you will have your pen and paper Okay, you can write down uh, the particular things you want. And then after the 10 minutes, you will go again for reading of the same stem and nine minutes to for your performance. 
okay in communication with patient and relatives suppose um, here is the stem a patient um, had some some uh, uh, he needs to do a ogd okay and you are um, uh, suppose you are a hsho and you need to explain that uh, to the patient and you need to take a consent for that as well okay so you will start and you will go and you will start your station and you need to perform the over call uh, these uh, nine minutes uh, for this station. In the communication phone call, the same thing uh, you're going to do, but this time you're going to talk with your colleague or a consultant or a registrar. Okay, you are going to call uh, to them and you are going to explain uh, the problems to those and they will cross question you, but this time you will be talking over the phone. And also in that station, you will have a prep station for 10 minutes and a full station for 10 minutes as well. And that, minutes as well. And that 10 minutes uh, will be divided into one and nine minutes. Is it clear about the communication station, please? Sir, I want to say just one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, stations there will be no further cross questions is it right uh, in the communication with patient relatives right patient or relatives no cross question will be asked by examiner yes you are just explaining the questions or some problems that the patient will be having or the relatives will be having okay and you are going to and give those persons to the answers, but there will be no cross-questioning from the examiner in the communication with the patient or relative. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so communication, uh, communication station is actually 20 minutes, right? 10 minutes for preparation, 10 minutes for delivery. Right. Empty communication station. Right, okay. right, you are correct, thank yes. Okay, so in communication station, you need to be, uh, you need to have a very good idea uh, about some gestures, some uh, empathies, okay? You need to show a lot of empathy to the patient while you are speaking, you need to show uh, you are uh, giving uh, a lot of um, um, importance to the uh, patient, okay? And you cannot just uh, skip anything. You need to answer. You cannot uh, just by um, sit there, uh, keep yourself uh, muted. No, you need to communicate, okay, uh, during this communication with the patient and relative. Sir, if you want to uh, add anything in the communication part. No, I think, I think. Mm -hmm. And the communication, as the doctor Atik said, uh, there is no interruption will be with the examiner completely. The examiner will just uh, a referee sitting beside or away on a side from the room and just listening how you are communicating with the patient. Don't look to the examiner by any way. Don't just keep your eye on the patient or the relative, talking to him in a professional way, exactly your, as, as you are sitting in your clinic. If you, the, the patient, ask you a question, and you look to the examiner, try to explain something for the examiner, it's completely a fatal mistake. Forget about the examiner completely. He is not here. Be professional. Talk to the patient eye to eye. Show sympathy. Interact with the patient's situation. If he's crying, you have to wait. If he's shouting, you have to be silent until he finish. Don't interrupt the relative or don't interrupt the patient. After he finish, just in a smooth way, in a, 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 a smooth introduction. Okay, can I answer your question? And then go slowly and so on until you finish uh, your station. Being so rapid in talking, like blah, 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 and something, this is something not professional will affect your mark. Being so slow and hesitated and not answering like Dr. Asik say, you have to be, uh, 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 clear in your answers. Not, I think so. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is 
completely for the patient communication unacceptable. And um, that's all, yani I think uh, that's all uh, uh, should be happening in communication. And this is the most important part of the exam together with the history taking that you have to practice with another colleague with you uh, uh, as much as you can before the exam until you be completely confident in answering question without hesitation. Your answer should be uh, should be ready in your mind upon practice you did through the last few weeks before the exam. So you not stop, don't waste time, and you don't have to think uh, uh, about the answer. No, complete practice of your mind to answer the question, uh, to reply to the patient uh, queries, and to end the conversation in a simple, easy way, and to check if the patient get everything you, you said, uh, or just recap for him everything and so on. So uh, one of the uh, things that don't need much study with yourself, you can take the communication session and know it by heart with yourself without practicing with your friend or, or our team or the colleagues. So uh, uh, finally in the exam, you'll find you can't uh, communicate with this patient or the doctor communication or the phone communication or as well. That's uh, all about the communication uh, yes. concerning so, the relative or patient. Yes. In the communication phone call uh, and communication with the patient relatives, those things uh, you need to keep in your mind. But in the future, we will be uh, giving uh, a lot of tricks to understand what are the things you can do and what are the things you cannot do in the communication as well. Okay. Next is a very important thing is the physical examination. And you will have three stations in the uh, clinical examination station. Here, uh, you will have, um, again, you will see some stem. And uh, after seeing the stem, uh, you, when you will enter into the station, this station will be, this nine minutes actually, this nine minutes will be divided into two parts. One is six minutes and three minutes. Within the six minutes, you need to do all your clinical examination, okay? And in the three minutes, you need to present your case and you need to answer the questions that will be asked by the examiner, okay? In the clinical examination, you are not allowed to take any kind of history, okay? Uh, you are only allowed to um, uh, do the clinical examination from the patient. There are a lot of uh, clinical examinations, uh, like uh, you need to examine the patient's abdomen or cardiovascular system or respiratory system. There are a few orthopedics, cranial nerves, uh, cerebellum examination, AV fistula, varicose veins, okay? There are a lot of uh, examination stations. This is a very crucial station because you need to do a lot, a lot of practice uh, to ace on your clinical examination station because you will have a completely blocked mind when you will enter um, in your station without the practice, okay? So this clinical examination is all about the practice, but before you practice, you need to know what are the steps you need to follow, what are the things you need to know, and there are a lot of questions that will be asked to you um, in your exam. There are a lot of things um, to know about how to present your case, okay? What will be the uh, exact diagnosis uh, for this uh, patient? So uh, those are uh, really, um, uh, there are a few tricks uh, that we are going to, we will actually uh, going to disclose those things in your uh, future sessions as well, inshallah. Okay. Uh, about the clinical examination stations, sir, if you want to add anything, or anyone has any questions, please. Anyone has any question till now? Dr. Shakwat, you have any question? Yes, sir, I have a good question. Mm -hmm. Please go ahead. During, during examination, I might to ask something regarding examination to patient. Is it allowed to ask anything, any something, any regarding examination, is it painful? Just like, is it painful or painless? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any pain or? 
or any yes. other question okay the thing is uh, what are the things yeah. exactly you need to do uh, we will discuss those things in the session as well okay there are a lot of things in the clinical examination when you will enter you need to wash your hand you need to introduce yourself you need to take the patient's consent you need to um, take uh, the patient name and age is it uh, the same person you are going to examine or not you need to check uh, if there is any pain to the patient uh, where is the pain you need to be very gentle to the patient there are a lot a lot of things you need to follow you need to follow the uh, nhs protocol what are the things you can do what are the things you cannot do so we will discuss those in the future sessions inshallah okay but um I'm just uh, trying to give you an overall structure, okay? Is that clear okay, okay, till now? Okay. <clears throat> Next is about the history taking station. So the history taking stations is easy and also a tough station. When it is easy, if you know uh, what are the things you are going to ask, when it is um, not easy is um, if you cannot manage your time, okay? Again, in the history taking, you are going to have two stations, okay? Uh, suppose a, a patient came to you and said, okay, I'm having abdominal pain. The patient was alcoholic and the patient has um, previously diagnosed with ulcer, okay? And um, something like this, something like um, this stem that you are a surgical SHO on call and you are uh, asked to see a 45 year old patient in accident and emergency and who has an acute onset of epigastric pain after alcohol uh, drinking in a party and she also had the peptic ulcer disease and she's taking a PPI and she is very anxious because her daughter's wedding is in two days, okay? Now you will start the station. So you will start, and we have something called 10 steps approach for the history taking, okay? So uh, if you know what are the questions you need to ask to this patient, then this station will be very easy for you, okay? And also there are specific diagnoses for a specific um, presenting complaints. Keep that in your mind. Okay, uh, some of you might know a lot, a lot of things uh, because of your clinical experiences, because of your studies, but in for MRCS, this is very limited. Okay, these are very, very limited and you, you have to go for a specific things. So for this um, patient, you need to know the exact diagnosis for this patient. So for this patient, the diagnosis will be acute pancreatitis. So you need to know what are the questions you need to ask to make sure you, you did a uh, exact diagnosis for this patient. And also you need to keep in your mind about the associated diagnosis, and then you are going to ask those. The problem is in the history taking is, um, you will not be able to manage your time here about the time frame is again, uh, one minute for reading of the stem because every station is 10 minutes, right? So in nine minutes, it will be divided into again, six minutes and three minutes in the history taking. All right, in six minutes, you need to ask all the history, all the questions you need. After the six minutes, you are going to present your case and then the examiner will ask you a few questions and you need to give the answers to the patient, right? So here, time is your enemy, okay? So you need to be very fast and you need to know what are the questions exactly you are going to ask to this patient, okay? And um, in the history taking, also you need to be very polite. You need to be, um, you need to show a lot of um, empathy to the patient, okay? Here you cannot do any clinical examinations, of course not, all right? And uh, yeah, uh, and of course there are a lot of tricks for, uh, every stations which we are uh, we will discuss in further sessions inshallah okay sir if you want to add anything with that uh, okay um, regarding the history uh, i think you are allowed to have one paper and pen write the notes from the patient to present your case 
uh, يعني most most stations are 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 fixed stations uh, and you know it before يعني you study all the stations uh, we we يعني you know about the station of thyroid or the seizures or the erectile dysfunction everything but uh, in front of the examiner you just have a small piece of paper and you have a pen and you just writing small notes okay because you um, uh, uh, you are not um, nothing it is something negative against you that that you can say some data wrong about the patient so if you ask when you present your patient he said Mrs. Uh, uh, something like this 25 years old uh, and so on so you have to you can't say what is the age of the patient and you after you finish your history you don't know and you forget the name of the patient or you forget the main complaint or something like this so a piece of small paper you just 25 uh, uh, something like worker working like teacher so 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 and so and at the end you will write two or three lines about presenting your patient, your case. The examiner will not interrupt you through the six minutes, will not interrupt you through the six minutes, but the examiner has in front of him a checklist. And that's what Dr. Atik say, you have to ask about everything. You have a checklist in front of him. You can checklist maybe asking about a pain and he wants you to ask about infection, malignancy, trauma, uh, any uh, simply this, and you ask it about many question in infection, and you didn't complete trauma and uh, 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 any malignancy, or you just to ask very few questions about this. The examiner has a checklist he have to cover. Okay, in infection, you ask about fever, you ask about pain, I will ask about discharge, in, tra in trauma, you ask about trauma. Uh, in the malignancy, you ask about anorexia, about uh, this, and according to this checklist, it will give you the mark. Plus, plus, some marks for your communication, for your showing sympathy, for your interactive with the patient, don't keep silent, and so on. Uh, this is also some marks about this. And then the rest of the marks, uh, I think it would change the list, maybe about uh, four or five marks only, according to the few questions in the three minutes he will ask you about, tell me differential diagnosis, how to manage this patient, what is this, and then give you some questions. So in history station, you have to be very uh, 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 confident and very uh, have very good practice uh, uh, before it. You have in your mind, once you see this patient suffering from this, your mind uh, automatically should Put down the checklist in your mind to ask about in a very fast way. So you cover all the station and you can finish the station at time before six minutes finish. Okay, in as again in a professional way. Uh, in some stations, in some stations, you have what is called a layman with the examiner. What does mean that the layman with the examiner? That means that um, uh, uh, when talking to a patient, you have to take care that you are talking to a non-medical person. So you have to take care not to say medical terms as much as you can. And all of this you will get trained about. You will get trained about it. Okay, so you, you are not allowed to say esophagus. You will say the food pipe. You are not at South, say anticoagulant, you will say blood center and so on. And you have a list, a big list of things you have to say and you don't have to say uh, what to say and what not to say during your history session because the, the man beside the examiner, the other man beside the examiner, the layman, this is a non-medical person and he at the end, he should tell the examiner or give a score, did he understand the whole history taking the station or Many, many medical terms have been mentioned and he couldn't understand. And for sure, the patient also can't understand it. Uh, so this is the main trick of this station. Okay, uh, uh, you have to take care. They are talking a non-medical and another one is judging you during the station. 
no one of them will interrupt you through the six minutes and then the uh, examiner will ask you in the last three minutes about the few question uh, regarding what you took after you introduce your uh, your uh, uh, just summary about uh, your history taking okay i think uh, simply i i finish thank you okay anyone has any question please all right let's talk about the uh, procedural skills in the procedural skills again you are going to have um, two stations so these procedural skills are really easy um, a lot of candidates ask me, okay, I, I don't have um, prior clinical um, uh, practice. So what can I do? So <clears throat> the thing is for the main procedure, uh, you will not have a lot of marks, but as a whole, as a whole uh, overall station, uh, you need to pass as a whole, okay? So there'll be a mark when you are going to um, enter to the station, you greet to the examiner, when you are going to greet to the uh, patient, you introduce yourself. Okay, there are again, a 10 steps approach in this procedural skills as well. When you follow some uh, NHS protocol, right? Um, in the NHS protocol, they, they follow something like, you need to put your sharps into the sharp bean and other waste materials into the waste bean. Also, they follow something like, um, about the local anesthesia introduction, they will use a 21 gauge needle to take the um, uh, locals into the syringe. And when you are going to push that into the patient, they will follow that you will, uh, are you changing the needle or not? You need to change that 21 gauge to the 25 gauge. And after the changing, you need to uh, throw that shards into the shard bin. So those are few things and also in every stations, there are few certain things you need to know um, for your procedural skills, okay? So as a, as a whole, in, in overall, you need to be very good of um, those particular things to pass the procedural skills station. Here, you can have um, to, you, you need to do something like, you need to do uh, abscess drainage or a nervous excision, or you need to go and uh, you need to suture a wound, or you are um, you need to go for tying a knot, okay? Um, sometimes you need to do or explain how you are going to do a chest tube insertion, catheterization, um, IV cannulation, all of those things. So. First things first, you need to know how to do that correctly, okay? If you know by knowledge, then at least you can perform, okay, in your real exam. And that's the key uh, for the procedural skills. In the procedural skills, uh, they will try to um, impose you a stress. Like when, when exactly you will start your procedure, the examiner will say, uh, doctor, there is no time Okay, you are taking too much time. There is no time, please hurry up, hurry up. So please um, don't fall into their, um, these stressful things. Just do your work, keep your nerves um, very cool. Along uh, with that, the patient here, uh, they will ask you a few questions when you are going to do some things like some, suppose um, these patients, uh, the patient had some owned and uh, you need to suture that wound. So while you are doing your procedure, the patient will say, okay, uh, will there be a scar? Okay, uh, can I take bath? Uh, do I need any antibiotic? Do I need any painkiller? When I can change my dressings? All of those questions while you are doing your procedure, okay? And also the examiner can ask you a few questions like, okay, uh, what is the dose of the uh, anesthetic agent? Um, how uh, how much anesthetic agent you are going to give? What is Langer's line? So something like those questions they can ask while you are doing your procedure just to impose some stress over you when you are uh, going for this procedural skills. But keep that in your mind. You need to be very professional, okay? You need to show a lot of empathy to the patient. You need to explain all the steps um, after... Um, Sorry about that. Uh, Dr. Naima, can you just mute yourself, please? Okay. 
<clears throat> so, um, yeah, um, something like when you are going to introduce your uh, anesthetic agent, uh, it is advised to say, now I'm going to wait for five minutes, okay? But are you going to wait for five minutes? during your procedure? No, because you, you are not having that much time. So examiner will say, okay, uh, consider the five minutes is over. You can proceed, please. Again, uh, there are a few steps uh, before you start your procedural skills, like when you start. So uh, as I said, there are 10 steps approach for the procedural skills as, uh, as well. We have uh, structured that so that it will be a lot easier for you to understand during your examination. So one of them is to check the WHO surgical safety checklist, okay, which we don't do in a regular basis in our own, uh, own country, right? So there are a lot of things, few little things which you are just asking, okay? You're just asking. And after you finish, always ask, I, I, I will document my procedure into the notes. So few things you need to uh, follow Maybe you're not good in the procedural skills. No problem. You never did any suturing. No problem, okay? If you know these things by your knowledge, then at least you can perform some things, okay? So those are the few tricks and tips you need to know. And there are certain things you do. You have to know that uh, what you cannot do and what are the things you need to do, okay? About the procedural skills. Sorry, if you want to add anything with that, No, 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 you covered everything actually. Anyone has any question, please? Please, you can ask. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, sir, in procedural skills, do we have to choose our instruments? Like, uh, uh, is there anything like they will be displaying yes. us different sizes of? instruments yes. and then we have to decide which instrument to pick yes size you have to the yes you have to yes you have to suppose here in uh, suturing of our own right you need to pick your suture by yourself and okay. what about the forceps and the scissors mostly mostly uh, there are everything okay um, they will not bother about those but few specific things you need to pick uh, like uh, there could be a lot of um, chest tubes, okay, uh, different sizes. You need to pick the correct one. In case of the suturing, uh, there would be a lot of sutures over there. You need to pick the correct one. But in case of the um, like um, the syringe, uh, the needles, uh, the forceps, scissors, uh, like those will be there. Okay, you don't need to uh, bother about those. Everything will be there. Um, yeah, and also in catheterization, uh, you need to pick the correct size as well, okay? So few uh, specific things you need to pick, but other things, other instruments will be there already. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we covered the knowledge and the skill part, okay? So uh, in the skill, you had three clinical examinations, two history, two communication, and two procedural skills, that's nine. And in the knowledge, you had three anatomy, three critical care, and two pathology stations, that's eight. So total 17 stations. Is that clear? For everyone, please reply. <laughs> I want to be like, uh, I want all of you needs to be interactive, please. I'll open your mic and start to talk, please. Uh, yes, say it say. again. I'm late today. I'm sorry. Uh, which part? No. About summary about the station, station. and the number. Station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. yes. So so we had uh, we had um, we had a total seventeen stations. Okay. In the knowledge, we have eight eight stations. Within the eight stations, we have three anatomy stations, three uh, applied surgical science and the critical care stations, and two patho pathology stations. In the skill part, we have three clinical examination stations, two history taking stations, 
two procedural skill stations and two communication stations. Okay. That's total okay. 17. All right. Okay, Dr. Forhab, you wanted to ask uh, something, I guess? Yes, sir. Yes, please, go ahead. Sir, I want to know uh, in, uh, whether there is similarity between the FCPS part two OSP and mm -hmm. the MRCS part B OSP. And okay. uh, actually, which one is more tough? FCPS is more tough. Yeah. Okay, so I think if someone appeared in the FCPS OSP, then it will be a little bit easier for them to uh, 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 attend the MRCS Part B. Okay, Dr. Farhad, the problem is the two exam is a complete uh, two different protocols. Okay, so here for MRCS, you, you you don't need to have a lot of sound uh, knowledge about the skills. Here, what they will see is how you are um, handling an overall situation. Okay? It's nothing like um, you make the stitch um, just, just exactly one centimeter um, apart from each. Is it very nice or not? No, 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 no. It's nothing like that, okay? You need to have a clear um, idea and uh, the things of the NHS protocol in the skill part, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, the, what you are trying to do is you are uh, trying to compare that. You cannot compare those two um, here. <laughs> uh, one thing that actually... uh, I know mm -hmm. one candidate who went with the preparation of FCPS for MRCS Part B, and he failed twice in Part B. Yeah, he attempted because, the third time. So yes, because be that's the two different to things. Both. Yes. Yes, totally. No, actually, uh, sir, can I ask uh, another question? Again, again, no problem, uh, yes. Actually, just I have passed uh, MRCS Part A. Mm -hmm. And I booked uh, for Chennai, uh, mm -hmm. July 25th. Uh, mm -hmm. by Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, actually, I am thinking uh, whether I, this uh, time, most probably I have five months and uh, four or five days, whether this uh, uh, time is sufficient for me to uh, take the preparation for part B or not. Actually, I am afraid. Yes, we will, we will talk about the preparation time in a bit. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yes, we, we will okay. we will talk about those, no problem. Because uh, I have passed FCPS part two in uh, January, 2015. So mm -hmm. a, a lot of difference. Uh, there is gap, no. Um, okay, we will talk about that, Dr. Farhad. Okay, 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 thank you. Okay, all right. Dr. Sonia, you need to uh, verbalize few things. Yes, you need to explain certain procedures to the uh, patient, okay? Also, in the clinical examination, you need to explain certain um, <coughs> examination things to the patient as well. Yes, you need to verbalize those, yes. Okay, about the uh, study materials, sir, I want you to talk about this. Sir, are you here? Sorry. Uh, about those study materials, sir, if you want to say anything. Nothing. Okay. So the, the thing is, in the study materials, um, there are a lot of varieties of the study materials, but keep in your mind, every things are the same. Okay. Every study materials are the same. Okay. But the problem is you need to have one compiled study materials. Sometimes a uh, few people go for a certain uh, study materials and they will see that um, the history taking part or the anatomy part is not that good. So they will try to go for another study materials where the history taking is very good. 
okay or the anatomy is very good there so try to find some uh, some specific study materials where you will have a full compiled one um, one stop shop type study materials where you can have everything in a single place because why before just before your exam just think if you studied from different study materials like three or four okay it will be a very bad things just before your revision okay so try to study from a single study materials okay and that will be much more easier for you okay which study materials to use you need to pick that okay <laughs> i am not saying that you need to follow our study materials but i can say that what we did is a unique one and also you can find everything in one place okay so you don't need to go for um, different different materials to look for okay for your mrcs oski exam please you don't need to go for a full um, books a full uh, bailey and love no okay uh, that's not advisable because if you are trying to go for a full revision from uh, the Bailey and Love, you might be ending up about two years or three years or one year, maybe. Okay, so within. And uh, you're, not, you're, you're not pass. And yeah, you're not you, pass. you will not pass. Yes, of course. You're not pass. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry, yes. if you want we to. All, we add always anything, say, please. we always say, yes, we always say part A and part B MRCS exam is. is, is, is is a targeted exam for certain questions and certain stations uh, and common is common. You have about 85, 80 to 85 to 90 percent of questions for both part A and part B are repeated and you have to pass about 70 to 75 percent. This is your pass rate. OK, so your pass mark. So no need to go for books. That's why someone said he contact me a few days ago. Doctor, I think I need about one year to prepare for for uh, for part B because I don't have any clinical uh, or or work experience. No, completely. You are completely you are completely wrong. You are completely wrong. You have some questions, some stations with some points you have to cover, and no need to waste your time and waste your mind and 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 uh, 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 waste your money in uh, and time and money and effort in doing unimportant things uh, uh, on the uh, uh, but uh, uh, vice versa, this will, will affect your performance in the exam. So if you just, I need from you to study this station about aortic uh, uh, stenosis. Okay, I have about 30 questions for aortic stenosis. In the exam, you will have about 18 questions and two new questions, or you have the 20 question from this station without any change. So what you need to cover is this 30 question. But if you want to go to Bill's and Love and study aortic stenosis, okay, no problem, you go. But in the exam, you'll find yourself like lost between many materials, many questions, uh, uh, many information, and you can't get the target point in the, say, the, the examiner is. Uh, 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 the nine minutes or the six minutes needed by the uh, by the examiner, you just have in front of him points to answer. He will not uh, uh, ask from you to tell him some like uh, like a paragraph. No, doctor, tell me causes of aortic stenosis. Okay, okay, can be congenital, can be acquired from adult, can be. Uh, uh, something like uh, rheumatic heart. In senility, it can be calcific heart. Okay, next question, move. He don't need more details, but if you go for a big book or an, an, a book for ESI, you can just take for the causes half a day of studying. In front of the examiner, it's just 20 question points. Point, 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 and checklist he just make yes 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 and at the end he has he said here 18 out of 20 17 out of 20 and so on so you don't need to uh, 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 make your uh, mind crowded with many information for mrcs part a and part b and the main problem for many candidates 
the main problem for many candidates is jogging between sources and jogging between materials and jogging between groups and, and Facebook groups and, and, and Telegram groups and uh, WhatsApp groups and, and mini books. And I have 10 books at my home. At the end, before the exam, you can't revise everything and you can find no sp specific source you depend on. You have to study one source to be only one. Concise it. Exam oriented, updated. The most important thing updated with the last exams. So you have to ask about the last two, three months exams and what is the new question added? Because once a question is added in a station in UK, Within one month, it will be asked it in all centers all over the world. So Dr. Atik said in the start that they have added two new questions in actomycosis or acted some new question in osteomyelitis. Okay, already added to the stations. So it can be asked in UK last week, next week it will be asked in Cairo. Okay, so one source, concise it exam oriented updated and that's your main source before the exam within one week you can revise all what you studied if i have many sources if i have books i'm reading from if i have not updated materials and someone send me a file from one group study this file this is updated and someone send me a whatsapp file and some give me uh, printed papers. Yes, study these printed papers, important. And then at, before the exam, you find that have, you have many materials. Okay, what I study and what not to study and so on. Uh, uh, the exam is so simple. If you think about it in a simple way, the exam is so complicated if you complicate yourself. If you complicate yourself. Know the sources from the start. Put it in front of your eye, target it, study it, revise it, go to the exam. Okay, don't listen to outside here and here. As long as you have between hand an updated material or updated station, don't look behind. Don't look for the same station six months ago or one year ago. No, you have this one. Someone sent for you some papers from another group. No need. If you don't have time, the exam needs three to four months to finish. Those who think about one year or two year preparation, as long as the time will increase, make sure that your pass rate will be less. Okay. Anyone thank has any question me. regarding the study materials, please. Thank you, sir. I'm Dr. Atik. Could I just add one point here? Yes, please. Okay, for the benefit of everyone, because we should also learn from the experience of previous candidates. So one of, I know one candidate, uh, because um, he learned multiple resources from different uh, places, yeah, there's a high chance of missing a complete topic. So he completely missed infective endocarditis, which is a very paid and common topic in pathology. It is one of the first topics that you learn in pathology. He completely missed it. When it came in the exam, he was so shocked, so upset, and so, so surprised. And he came out and he confidently said that this is a completely new station. Didn't come in anywhere else. Understand? And he also, he failed. So you must understand that if you uh, jump between multiple resources, uh, there's a high chance that you will miss something that is very common. Okay. <clears throat> About the preparation time, so three to four months, or I can say three to five months uh, is enough if you are working, okay? You are uh, studying and working side by side. So it will be enough for um, to prepare yourself within these four to five months. But if you can focus on your study, okay, then 
um, and you, you don't have any other work to do, then it can be doable within two to three months of time on average, okay? And, uh, but one thing uh, very important uh, is, Dr. Shakwat, if you uh, want to ask anything, Yes, I am. Uh, I have one question regarding uh, mm -hmm. uh, study materials. Yes, please go ahead. Already, ahead. I, have, I have. I have already have known uh, so much materials as examination procedures uh, we should uh, um, learn. But uh, your, if I will stick to your study materials, your examination, your procedures, uh, how much will it cover our preparation for uh, examination? Everything. Everything. That is a complete. Uh, that is a complete materials. Of course, because of the standard. We need the not to other materials. No, no, no need. Oh, it's a... the the standard of the RCS. Okay. So, you will have ten percent of the questions that you cannot answer. Okay, because of the high standard of the. MRCS, uh, you will see the highest mark is around 90%, okay? So you cannot answer one the 10% of that, the questions. Mm -hmm. One thing during history taking, is it possible within provided time to make a diagnosis or is it necessary to make a diagnosis? Yes, yes, it is necessary to make the diagnosis. And yes, of course it is possible to complete your history taking within the six minutes of time frame. Okay. Um, doctor, I, I just um, want to clear something. Uh, doesn't mean that you fail to make the accurate diagnosis that you will miss the station. Okay. Uh, uh, you at the end of time, uh, you will be asked a few questions because as I think, as I said, uh, uh, the station will have about 15 questions, 15 about your uh, communication and history taking and how you cover the history and five marks or six marks, I can't remember exactly. It depends around the questions you will be asked after you finish your history. Okay, uh, 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 covering your history and covering the checklist you have to ask is having marks. Okay, and as long as you have, you almost reach to a diagnosis, but at the end, he will ask you, doctor, okay, give me a summary. So you have to say, I have Master Mrs. Frana, 25 years old and so on. What's your differential diagnosis? So you are now confused between it is multinodular goiter or it is cancer thyroid. And if from sure from your history, from what the question you ask it, unless you miss question, if you couldn't reach a, a, a question from this a diagnosis, so for sure you missed some question here regarding the, you forget to ask about malignancy. You forget to ask the, about the constitutional symptoms for malignancy. You forget to ask the patient about uh, anorexia, weight loss, uh, back pain, uh, sudden enlargement of a mass and so on, and affection of her voice or affection of her swallowing. So. For sure, if you couldn't reach and this, you have a miss here. But if I complete here and at the end, my experience, okay, my differential diagnosis between multinodular goiter versus cancer. So the examiner will go with the other question with you. You may miss some question, but at least you are playing within some marks. So you can just get from this question, mass and this station, you can need 11, 12, 13, and so on. So you are not going to have zero in this question, no. Uh, the, 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 the mark is not for the diagnosis. The mark is for your behavior, your communication, the checklist you have been asked and some question you will answer uh, because he will ask you what is the investigation you are going to do for the thyroid? Okay, uh, what's operation you can offer for the patient? Okay, what happens if the laryngeal nerve injured? This will be question from pathology and uh, critical care. The question after the station will be from, from pathology and critical care. So you can answer some questions here. So don't be panic. 
and don't be hesitated if you want to a station and you couldn't reach a diagnosis and that because that may affect the uh, upcoming stations in the exam. Keep relaxed, keep relaxed, keep relaxed till the end, okay? Okay. <clears throat> About the expenses. So it, it completely depends on you, uh, how you are going to ex, um, like uh, 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 go for those particular things. So roughly, uh, when you are going to uh, do your registration, it, it will cost you about um, 1,100 uh, pounds, maybe. Also, uh, there are a lot of courses. If you want to take that, it varies from 250 to 500 pounds, okay? And also, if you want to do a hands-on, also where you are living, suppose you are um, in India or in Bangladesh or in Sri Lanka, in Nepal, so it will vary uh, where you are going to give your exam. So expenses, it it it, it really varies uh, person to person. Next is about the course. <clears throat> okay, you should join the course, but you need to keep certain things in your mind. Okay, is the course is providing live classes or the recorded one? Next, every other. Uh, courses will say, okay, we are going to give you um, some mock, okay? But when you are going to give the mock, you will see something like, um, they are talking about the overall mock of anatomy in a, within these nine minutes. And that's completely absurd, okay? You cannot like complete all of the anatomy. No, 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 that's not practice, okay? Also about the uh, costs of the courses. Um, maybe some some courses can offer you only the recorded videos and the star materials with uh, $440, maybe, or, or maybe $500, maybe, but they're just giving you the recorded versions, okay? Uh, there is no live classes. So please, uh, whenever you are going to join a course, please uh, ask or uh, see if it is a live uh, course, or a recorded, pre-recorded one, okay? So um, please wise, uh, be wise and uh, be smart for that because after you do your subscription, it's uh, there is no return from that, okay? Next is <clears throat> about the mock sessions. In, in our courses, of course, um, sorry, if you want to add anything in about our courses. No, 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 no. I you are covering okay. everything, yeah. Okay. Most important, uh, okay. Just most important that we important. have all interact, interactive yes. sessions. We have all part A and part B. We have interactive sessions, live sessions. We don't offer any recorded sessions. But yes. this is different than we, rec we record. We record the live session for you so you can watch it whenever you're free. So if you are busy with your work and you miss one or two stations, uh, sessions from our live sessions, all sessions are recorded and uploaded at the same day to our study material. So even if you are busy, so you can uh, uh, see this station or watch this station in the same day or in the next day, and you come back for us to ask. The most important thing from the live session, because you can, you can ask about any point is not clear for you. Maybe I have 20 candidates, 15 of them are understanding this because I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, giving a session about GIT and I have 15 surgeons and I have five orthopedic and they couldn't understand. So they have the full right to ask, please explain this for me. I couldn't get this point and so on. This is the most important thing in live sessions. But the problem of record the session that you're just listening, and you just try to understand what is said to you or what is what you listen without any uh, way to ask about. So this is the most important thing. And uh, as we used in part A for live interactive sessions, we do the same in part B. All sessions are live, the mock tests are live. So you practice all the time. And as I said, most important thing for part B, part B, especially part B is practice. Without practice, 
and you know all the informations by heart, uh, I can tell you, unfortunately, you're not passed. Yes, okay, so that comes to the mock sessions. So what we do or what we uh, constructed is in your mock sessions, suppose you had your uh, session in 15th. So on the next day, you will be having a mock sessions of those stations, okay? That means every, every single stations, you will be having a mock. Okay, so there'll be an opportunity for you to practice with us as well. So that's the beauty of the mock sessions because every station needs to be practiced because you don't know specifically which station is coming towards you in your real exam, okay? So that means you need to be very precise about those questions and you need to have a very good feedback uh, about those sessions as well. So uh, we'll be doing the mock sessions as well uh, along with the our uh, regular course sessions. Okay, one important thing which we updated and you will not find anywhere is the simulation mock sessions. What is the simulation mock sessions is, so suppose now there are exam, uh, there are exams happening in UK, okay? Uh, started from 1st February and it will be uh, there for a few uh, days as well. So we are collecting all the questions, all the stations from each day. Uh, many of you can see, uh, I have uh, wrote down a note uh, with my handwriting and I post it in a single uh, every day in the group, right? So that means we are collecting all the stations. It's just the recalls. It's like a recalls for uh, the part A, and this is the part you can, B. Okay, you, you can share. You can share an example, Doctor uh, Pratik, please. If you can share one example about uh, the last week uh, recalls mm -hmm. you, you posted in, the, in your group, can yes. you share any, any one of them, please? Yes. Here. Yeah. This is the London eleventh uh, February exam, right? So. In the London, uh, the anatomy, three stations was these three stations, okay? In the patho, uh, they had the osteomyelitis and the cancer esophagus. In the critical care, they had these three and the clinical examination, these three. So everything, every stations are there, okay? So this simulation mock, what we are going to do is before, suppose you are going to give your exam um, in, uh, in July, okay, in July in Delhi. So we are collecting the previous year question for Delhi. Okay, so, and also we are making, uh, suppose you saw this uh, exam for nine or um, let's talk about from the first, if you are uh, seeing uh, it's an exam for first February, okay. So what we had is a complete, uh, complete answer uh, like this one. Let me just start from that. Yes. So this is a exam for that particular day, like exactly the same stage, station one. What are the questions was there? So we have put it all the answers here as well. Okay. And uh, what was the station for station two? And we have put it all the questions and how you're going to do the clinical examination stations. So something like that. And this is very uh, unique and you cannot see anything like this in anywhere else. Okay, so we are trying to collect all the questions from everywhere and we are trying to do these simulation um, stations by ourselves. So uh, what does it mean? Maybe you are going to give your exam in August in Kuala Lumpur, okay? We have all the station and the questions from previous one year about the Kuala Lumpur or about the Malaysia, okay? So if you have all these collective questions or collective stations by yourself, and within seven days, you just look all of those questions and all of those stations, Okay, then that means almost 80 to 85% you'll have a similar things because the trend is in the MRCS OSCE exam is 
um, reputation, the reputation of the exam stations. Like what? So we had the London Center exam, one day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day and six. And on the seventh day, it is a repetition on for day two. On the eleven, uh, on the tenth, it was the complete repetition for day four exam. On the um, uh, twelfth, it was the complete repetition of day eight exam. So the trend is of the repetition of the station. So it is just think if you have the access of these questions along with the answers for the previous one year. That means uh, you will pass this with almost 80 to 85 percent of mark okay and this thing is uh, no one can give you uh, that's for sure and no one ever fight this one and this is a lot of hard work to do all right um yeah sir if you want to say anything about this i think i almost cover everything about this one okay <clears throat> All right, guys, so we are in the very last uh, in our session. Now it's time for you to uh, questions anything. We are here to help you. We are here to give you the answers. If you want, you can ask anything, please. We are in a very last. Uh, we are finishing now. Anyone has any question, please? Hello, hello, Dr. can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, so I was asking that uh, during the OSCE examination, will they ask about the specific management or will they ask about the overall management? For example, let's say uh, uh, thyroid carcinoma. So we have uh, suspected either the multinodal goiter or the thyroid carcinoma, right? So will they ask about the specific management for the cancer or, uh, or let's say the overall management? Okay, it will depends on the station itself, okay? Um, and Overall, uh, there are certain specific questions they are going to ask you for a specific disease, okay? And sometimes they can ask you as a overall management, uh, sometimes like a protocol or a, and like um, what are you are going to do for a cancer, okay? As a overall, but it depends on the station itself. Uh, and almost the ticket will be surgery in general, by the way. I and mean, it will yeah. be something general, uh, general question because some detailed question about the management, uh, it's more asked in the FRCS in the fellowship. Uh, and the membership, they know that most uh, are maximum, they are going for ST3 or some training jobs. Uh, and um, uh, just just uh, some orthopedic, some cardiothoracic, some vascular. Uh, some general surgeon and some just uh, a urologist and something like this. So no detailed, no detailed questions uh, you will be asked about. So what is the management of this patient? Total thyroidectomy with muscle and uh, neck lymph node dissection. That's okay. Do not ask you about any more details uh, uh, about more than this. Because okay. of the time what constraints, the yes. Are, what are, no, 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 no. Thank just, you. just very simple, very simple questions. Don't yes. worry about so, so. Uh, because they will have only three minutes to answer all of the questions. Yeah, that's and 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 also uh, as as we said in the start of the uh, session that uh, if you said I don't have enough experience to go for part B, it's okay. No problem. You can go. General mm -hmm. question like what you did study in your uh, final final year. It, that's not more than this. The same, the same exam in your final year, the same clinical and history and paperwork. Maybe even your final exam is more tough and more detailed than the MRC, etc. Can I ask one question, sir, please? Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, should we uh, go to the NICE guideline or anything like that for protocols? Number one question. And mm -hmm. number two, what are the average pass mark uh, for MRC Part B, sir? Thank you. Okay, sir, if you want to uh, answer that. Uh, I can't remember the pass mark at the moment after I change the number of stations, but uh, I think also will be within, um, I think, 70%. 75%. 
70, yes, it, 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 I can say from 70 to 70 to 73. Uh, the problem of part B for some centers that has a special curve. Uh, 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 that's why some, some of, uh, of you asked ask a few minutes ago about, uh, about what, is the, uh, uh, what is the difference between UK centers and other centers all over the world. Uh, what we can notice that, or what it was still uh, uh, has been uh, uh, informed us about before our exam uh, a few years ago from one examiner that every day, every day has a special curve and every center has a special pass curve. Okay, so you can go for a UK center and you find many, many are uh, 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 passing the exam or, or, or or answering is good in the exam or have very high levels as they are working already in UK and have very good experience about the NICE guidelines and they are working in the field and they know what is the protocols and everything. So you can find the, the pass curve for the exam is like this high. Uh, you go for some place like uh, uh, Cairo or, uh, or Asian centers like uh, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur and so on. And you find the level of all uh, uh, the past mass run, like most of the candidates getting from uh, uh, 86 to 71. So maybe the pass rate mass run will be uh, uh, 70, okay? In UK, you can find most getting from 72 up to 76. So you can pass, the pass rate can be 70 or seven and so on. So you have a pass rate daily for every center, according to the question, because if you have five days in, 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 in Delhi as example. So you can find this day, uh, the, the highest rate was 75, the highest mark. And the next day, the highest mark was 71 because the stations are different and were very tough. And you can find the third day, some get 82. Okay, so they make a curve for pass for every day. Uh, by the way, from, from, Yanni, from the, one of the examiners, he told us uh, to calculate the curve is a very complicated, very complicated process. Very complicated process. Even everyone can see. They put every station with uh, uh, the mean mark for every station and the mean mark for the whole day and the mean mark for the whole five days of the exam. And through these days, they can get a curve for the pass for this exam. Okay, so you can find the pass rate in Cairo, it was less than uh, uh, 70. You can find it in UK 71. You can find it in Kuala Lumpur 96 and so on. So there is no fixed uh, pass, uh, pass score in, in for every center. And there is no fixed even in the same centers. And this is exactly what they informed us. You can find one day but you at, uh, at the end, you have the total result. You can find one day, one just giving 61% and he didn't pass. And, and the next day, one gets 60 and he passed. Okay, because this is different stations and this is different station from two different days. Okay, so I think talking about the pass rate and you calculate yourself and, and you just target the pass mark in the exam is one of the most dangerous uh, uh, way of thinking. Okay, you go for any station, you, you target about 16 to 17 in every station. This is your target in every station because if you miss a whole station, ensure that you pass. And don't put yourself in the calculation of the curve how to pass or not how to pass or something like this. I think this one question, you have another question, I think so. Dr. Farhad, you asked yes. uh, another question, please. Ask. What yes, was the sir, other question? Sir. Whether in part B, we should go through the NICE guideline or the protocols or not? Yes, that is uh, included into the materials. Exactly. Okay, Dr. Okay. Ibrahim, Dr. Mohammed Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, uh, I booked my exam uh, for Oman. Um, 
but uh, currently i'm in a place where uh, without any surgical exposure so i just want to get advice uh, how to uh, develop my uh, skills for the exam that is uh, the examination and communication skills practice you need but to do a lot practice. of practice yes you need to do a lot yes. of practice uh, about that dr mustafa <clears throat> the one thing is first of all you need to know uh, the steps you need to know uh, the knowledge um like what are the things you need to uh, do in a clinical examination in the procedural skills what are the protocols you need to follow then you need to do your practice regarding and according to that okay um you need you can just uh, when you hear that you need to discard your shards into the shard bin so what you can do is you can start your practice in your own uh, place okay while you are doing that okay uh, in the uh, clinical examination you need to ask the patient uh, do you have any pain okay just before you touch the patient you need to ask okay uh, now i'm going to touch or i'm going to feel over your tummy or i'm going to push or i'm going to listen okay so you can put those uh, practice in your uh, regular uh, practicing uh, areas okay so by those things you can improve your clinical skills about this mrcs oski it's all about the communication how can you improve your communication by practice where you can always are uh, here we are here as well right so you can practice with us in the mock just do uh, participate more and more and more so your communication will be good for your exam okay, okay. all right dr ibrahim Dr. Ibrahim, you wanted to ask. You raise your hand. Okay. Dr. Ibrahim, you can open your mic. Salam alaikum. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, for this very insightful session. Uh, secondly, uh, I had two questions. Please. Uh, the first question was uh, in relation with what Dr. Mustafa asked. Uh, I also wanted to do my exam in Oman. uh does the the type of patients that you when you are taking the exam if the patient is an arab will all of them be an english speaking patient uh that's my first question yes everyone question everyone is, of, uh, everyone of the patient will be english speaking undoubtedly uh, okay okay that's whatever thanks. whatever, uh, whatever native question. whatever native coming yeah. from uk or from yeah. the same priority or arabic or or indian or 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 pakistan or from maybe whatever maybe native english and maybe from from a man but speaking good english he can just help one from the exam centers or supervisor in the center but everything could be english speaking even the examiners oh, thanks, you can find some you can find some examiners Uh, uh, some examiners from Oman itself. You can find some examiners from UK. Some examiners coming from Pakistan. Some examiner coming from Egypt uh, to make uh, the exam in Oman. So in every place you can find different examiners, not native, and uh, uh, also the patients or the uh, the volunteers you going to make the uh, 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 the examination on them and everything. Even 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 the the the, the simu. Uh, 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 the patients will show, who will simulate like patients. Uh, they have good experience about answering your questions in an English, even if if their English is not good, but they can answer you. They are well trained about that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much, Doctor Rami. Uh, the second question uh, was uh, related to the course that you are providing us. uh how many times do you uh, offer the courses uh, because if someone wants to sit for november is it advisable that i take the course now or maybe i join if you have another session maybe starting right. from july going all the way to november what will you advise me to do should i join this group or i should join the next team if you are uh, at all providing another session or another course thank you 
the Pratik Vikarnath. Yes. So, Dr. Ibrahim, the thing is, you need to prepare yourself first, okay? So, <clears throat> what you can do is, you can join now, and you can prepare yourself in the first place, and you can continue your practice with us in the mock. So, you will have a very good idea about what are the things you need to uh, study and prepare yourself good, because in the OSCE, it's an expensive exam. Also, uh, there are a lot of expenses you will uh, face during your traveling, or other things as well. So I will prefer that you join with us this um, within this course and you prepare you well and you keep practicing, okay? Also, we'll have another uh, course uh, starting from May or June, we, we will decide that. And mostly we have uh, three courses along the year, okay? You can join later as well, but for me, uh, if I want to suggest you, I will suggest that you can join now, you prepare yourself, and also you can practice. Um, and this exam is all about the practice, okay? So for the practice, you need to know what are the things you have to go through during your study. Okay, if you don't um, start now, that means when you will be thinking, okay, I'm, I will join in uh, June or May, that means you will... Uh, you will lose these three months, okay? You will lose these three months. And uh, when you will starting in May or June, that means it's already late for you, okay? You will not have that much time because I think you are also working, right? So it's better to start early and you keep your practice, okay? Uh, shukran, Dr. Atiyah. All right, no problem. Okay, um, anyone has any other question, please? Dr. Udita? Yes. Yes, please. I want to ask, uh, do we need to pass in every station separately or as a whole? Uh, in the skill, yes, that is a two complete uh, different structure, right? So you need to pass the knowledge as a whole and also in the skills as a whole, okay? But not like... Um, maybe you 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 keep yourself muted in one station, but you are fantastic in other stations. Okay, that means in the knowledge you had a very good marks in in seven stations and zero mark in one station. It will not vary. No problem. As overall, they will count your pass or fail. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone has any other question, please? Uh, I, I have a question, sir. Um, I have, uh, after I booked uh, the exam, they uh, sent me a form saying that uh, checklist, uh, they have told uh, applicant declaration, uh, something like that. Uh, I cannot understand what is that uh, they have asked. They told me to uh, to copy and send it back to to their, uh, uh, send it through email, uh, I think, to Royal College of Edinburgh. Okay. So I think it then presents the, uh, the application for, form for all the candidates. That's just like a declaration about that uh, you have to, uh, to, uh, 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 to fill uh, just, just like, like, uh, Identification card you have to, to to send. I think so, Yen. I think only them but I do something like this. Yes. Uh, yes. As far as I remember. Any... They will give give they, they will give the uh, some checklist. Okay. So you need to uh, know about those checklists uh, that you are going to follow their rules. Okay, and um, their norms what you can do and what are the things you cannot do if you are agreed to that, okay? Then you will sign that and you just send that to them uh, normally, okay? Nothing um, special or nothing hidden about that. Okay, Dr. Mustafa? Um, okay, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, I want to know, is the exam is conducted all over the world with the similar topics or topics is very, uh, Center to center. 
um, okay. It will vary. It will vary center to center, but as a whole, the overall, um, the overall course stations are the same. But the thing is, you can have different stations in your exam, but the overall syllabus is the same. Okay, um, and it's just like part A. Suppose sometimes you are uh, uh, you are having uh, same exam in Cairo in London. Mostly they tried. They try to follow a certain rules. They need to uh, give the same stations all over the world in the same day, but it can vary. It depends on the RCS. They, they sometimes change this um, in center to center maybe, but the, as a whole, the overall syllabus is the same. Okay? Okay, okay. There are uh, time dividation in different parts of the examination. Is the time maintained strictly or uh, is it very no 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 they will <laughs> they will maintain the timing uh, strictly no variation oh, okay thank you <clears throat> okay anyone has any other question please you can ask it's a uh, it's a it's a course of communication so um you need to communicate if you want or uh, uh anything you want to ask all right so let's finish this okay uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining and hopefully we will start our uh, course, uh, our session from 15th and our mock sessions from the 16th, okay? Thank you so much uh, everyone for joining. Today, I hope we tried uh, to make you understand the overall structures and the ins and outs of this MRCS OSCE exam. Thank you so much again. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Ram Yusuf, sir. Uh, um, you, you, you made a lot of things clear uh, within us. Thank you for that as well. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Atik. You prepared very nice uh, orientation today. I hope every, everyone in the group uh, have benefited from this uh, uh, short meeting. And we promise you, we will have regular meetings, all of you, uh, to clear all your debate, your questions, and everything you want to know. Uh, and more and more, we, uh, we are happy to contact us uh, through our uh, groups, uh, MRCS Made Easy or IMG group. Uh, happy to contact us anytime, uh, me, Dr. Atik, or the other team, uh, Dr. Isra, and uh, the rest of our team working behind the screen, preparing all these wonderful and uh, uh, precious materials from all over the world, getting the questions and prepare it for you in this uh, uh, amazing way. Uh, contact us anytime, 24 hours. We are available to answer your questions. Uh, whatever you join the course, you join the mock test or just want to study alone uh, for any other reason for your uh, personal thing. So you are welcome to ask anything anytime uh, for sure. Okay.